Hello again, people. Um, want to carry on a little bit from where I left off last time with the using the input effects to uh, commit to a sound, to commit to um, you know what you're recording, get into the machine what you want to hear, and not necessarily leave too many choices up to the mixing stage. Now, how I've done this, I, I, I'll put a link to um, a video that Kenny Joy has done that uh, is actually he uh, turned me on to this idea of the multi-track recording. Um, and I'm kind of going to elaborate on this. I know I'm rambling as usual, but I found it very difficult to do it the way I've done it and actually commit input effects at the same time basically. Um, so what I had to do was accept a kind of hybrid method, which I still commit, I still make the sound I want to hear as I'm recording, and I'm monitoring the sound I want to hear, but I'm actually recording raw files, so I can twiddle later, although if you get what you want, my advice would be just to commit to it and render to that. But let's go through this. Um, as I said, I'll put a, a link to Kenny's video as well in this, but I'll briefly kind of talk you through how this works because it's a brilliant little concept. And if you haven't seen his video, this I think you'll find this kind of useful. Now, um, let's just change that back. Um, if we go into the I.O. of the track that I've used to record my audio to, now, as you can see, it doesn't look like a normal stereo audio track, never mind a mono audio track. Uh, I've in fact recorded, well, I've in fact recorded four separate channels to this track, although I'm only using three of them, as you can see. Um, I recorded, it's a little bit of an orchestral thing, and I've just set up a deck of tree for speed. Um, if you don't know what that is, I su highly suggest you look it up because if you're recording any kind of acoustic ensemble, it's a really useful way of making that is quick and it gets good results. Um, okay, so what we can do is if we have a look at the channel count here, you can see I've got four track channels within this one track which, as you can see, relates to here. I've got one, two, three, four, okay? Um, now, how this works is you, you you change that to four track channels, and when you come into your record session, now, bearing in mind I've got a different sound card here from the one I had at work. I was using a 16-track digital mixer at work. But you can choose, you know, from channel four to eight out one, which is on mine, it was actually three to six on the other one, but in three to seven, I think, I can't remember, it doesn't matter, but anyway. and Or you can choose one to four, two to four, three to da da da, on, on, onwards and upwards, whatever channels you're using. So you select that, and with your input set on your mixing board, whatever it is you're using to get the, the sound in, and I recorded these three microphones, okay? Now, what I've then done, if we go back to the I.O. here, is I've switched off the, the parent master send, and I've set up three tracks. So I've got my center mic, and my left and my right mic. You'll have to excuse my dog in the background if you can hear it. My wife's just come home, so he's gone nuts, nuts. <laughs> Mutts, nuts, whatever. But anyway, so these are my three channels. So what I've done is I've done sends, pre-effect sends, out to those three channels. And, you know, audio one, audio two, audio three, out to the, the three channels here so that I can monitor what's going on when I'm recording. Because the problem with if you just have this track on its own and try to monitor Channel 1 will be on the left, Channel 2 will be on the right, and Channel 3 of that will then also be on the left. So you're kind of like, you know, so you need to farm them out so that you can monitor properly. And then what I've then done is, as I did in my last video, for those of you who have seen it, is I set up my slate 
effects. And I don't understand why it's not showing the whole thing, but anyway, um, there is more in there. Um, as I did before, so I've got my preamp, my EQ, well I've got two EQs that do two, two different things, I've got a compressor, and then I've got my virtual channel, okay? And I've got that on all three of these. So although I'm not actually recording them direct when I'm tracking, I, that's what I'm monitoring with, and that's me committing to those sounds. So what I can then do is I can render these three tracks out with those effects, intact. So if I just briefly play you a little section of this, as interesting as it will be, um, you can see what's going on. You can see that the three tracks have been sent out. Now, the whole point of the deck of tree so I turn down the two side channels, you see it gets more mono, or I can increase the stereo field. I have control, okay? So the point of using this kind of holding track for the recordings is, as you can see, we've got two takes up here. Now, say this is a drum track, and you've got 10 mics on the drums, okay? Uh, if you wanted to select different takes of those drums, you would have to individually go through each track here. Okay, so you have to go to number three, select whatever take it is you want, go to number four, select the same take, go to number five, select the same take, and so on and so forth. In this case, I've only got three channels, it's not so bad. But if you had a drum track with 10, you, there's, there's chances you're going to get this wrong and you're going to select the wrong tape on one of them. Whereas here, I can just flick between. I've got two takes here and I can just go here and flick between it and I've still got everything going out through my three channels with my effects that I'm monitoring with, etc, etc. Okay? So that's the advantage of doing it this way. So then there is also the fact that as you have your effects on the channel that, and you're monitoring through those effects, like I keep saying this, then you're committing to those effects. Now what I could then do is go to my center channel and render it. So let's render that to a mono stem track. Okay, so there you have that rendered now with our effects intact and you've committed to that sound. I won't bore you and go through the other two, but but trust me, that, that that's how this works. And I just think it's a wonderful solution that like you can use this if you're putting a couple of mics on guitar cabs, for example, or if you've got a couple of mics, you know, two or three mics on whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. It's if you're using more than one microphone, then this is a wonderful, wonderful way of doing your recordings and keeping it very easy to go between takes and figure out exactly what's going on. So, hope that was useful. Um, I'll see you in the next one. And uh, Questions, whatever, comments, let me know, and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Thanks, folks. Bye now.